In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and replace a power stern rack on a 3.5 liter Nissan Maxima. Take your steering wheel and center it. Make sure it's centered. Car in park. You want it as straight as possible, parallel. And then we're going to raise the vehicle up. Take a 10 millimeter wrench or socket and disconnect the negative battery cable. Loosen it up. Set it aside. Make sure it doesn't pop up and ground out. Push it down as far as you can. Good to go. 21 millimeter socket, remove the tire. Do the same to the other side. On the passenger side inner fender well, you're going to remove this inner fender cover. There should be four push pins. This vehicle only has two. I'm just going to use a trim tool to pop these off. There should be two in the front here. They're long gone. Let's lift this up and get that out of the way. Take the cotter pin out of the outer tie rod end. And then discard it. 19 millimeter socket. We're gonna take that nut right off. Now you're gonna have to hit this right here to pop that out. You can use a tool that they have a spreader that goes in. I don't like using the forks because they can rip the boots unless it's a necessity. Remove the top of the sway bar only be cut link because it's easier than getting to the inner one because we have to take the sway bar and be able to lift it up to feed the rack through. 18 millimeter socket. Let's see if we can spin it right off. The inside's spinning so I'm gonna have to get a wrench to hold that. 19 millimeter wrench holding the inside of that link. Take that right out of the way. Do the same to the other side so that that sway bar has freedom to pivot up and down. So now we're going to remove the bolt to the power steering rack side so it's on the other side of the pressure line. It's a 14 millimeter socket or wrench. Try to get it over here. Here we go. Let's see if we can break it free. Make sure you have a catch basin underneath. And make sure you keep it, set it aside. So here is the electrical connector that comes from the power steering rack. I'm going to disconnect it from the line so we can see it better too and disconnect it from the connector. Push down on that tab and pull. Now it's been out in the elements so it's probably got a lot of sand in there. There we go. Now we're going to get that out of the way. Now we can really see that return line. We're going to disconnect that with a pair of pliers. I have a catch basin underneath. We're gonna squeeze that clamp. There we go. Take the line off. It's gonna make a mess, so. So from the front of the vehicle, you can see right through that transmission. I'm just gonna put a pry bar on there. See if I can just see if I can slide that hose off. So this bolt on the steering shaft to the power steering rack is a 12 millimeter socket. Now, before you take the tie rod ends out, I recommend breaking this free, and then we'll 
move on from there. So I took a pair of locking pliers and I locked it on the base of that steering joint because no matter what, even though the steering wheel's been centered, the tire rods are still in, because it's electronic, has an electronic device to the rack, that solenoid will allow that steering column to spin while you try to loosen this pinch bolt. So by putting that locking pair of pliers there, I can get a swivel socket in there and take this pinch bolt right out. Because no matter what, even if I put the seatbelt on the steering wheel, it still would have had too much give and spun because even a half inch up there is like a foot down here. And this just made it less complicated. Now, once I take the bolt out and I take the locking pliers off, I'm still going to lock that steering wheel in place because I don't want it to turn a 360 because then you'll ruin your clock spring. So you want to put that seat belt on that steering wheel. So I located those locking pliers on the back and that made it able to loosen this bolt and spin it out. So here is our bolt that goes into the rack into the steering shaft. And because the link is disconnected, you have the freedom to move this arm up and down. So you can get those locking pliers right in there on the base, just like that. Okay, so from underneath the driver's seat, you have your steering column. So before you start taking the rack out and disconnecting the steering rack from the column, you're going to hold the steering wheel and with a 14 millimeter socket, you're going to break this bolt free and take it out so that this shaft can fall down. At least loosen it up and see if we can slide this shaft down. Because you want to get that to come out so it doesn't turn the steering wheel. Now make sure you have that steering wheel held because you don't want it to spin 360. You'll destroy the clock spring. So once I get this tightened and I can get my body out of here, I'll put the seat belt on that steering wheel. So now that we have the steering shaft disconnected from the rack from under the driver's you know, foot area, that's good. But this steering wheel is like a, a free wheel and we don't want it under any circumstances, even vibrating, turning too much that it's gonna rip the clock spring. So for a little bit of insurance and several hundred dollars savior, I'm just gonna do what the tow truck drivers do. You're just gonna take your seatbelt, run it right through, pull it all the way through, and then latch it. Once that's like that, it's just gonna help it from actually spinning in place. That's all we're gonna do. So this is the rack and pinion that we're working on that we're taking out to replace it with this. So, so far we've disconnected the electrical solenoid that goes to the steering gear. We've disconnected both outer tie rod ends from the knuckle right here. We've disconnected the return hose, which goes on that top. And we've disconnected the power steering pressure hose that screws in here. Last thing we just did was take the steering column shaft off of this gear ratio. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take this jam nut, break it free on the passenger side tie rod end. I'm gonna take the extra tie rod end out and then I'll dismount it from the two mounting bolts. There's only two and we're gonna slide it right through the driver's fender well. So before we dismount the rack from the cradle, I'm gonna put this passenger side out of tie rod end back in the knuckle just to hold it. I'm gonna break this jam nut free because when you go to slide it through, if you can have the actual outer tie rod end on this side off as it slides through, it won't grab on anything. So 22 millimeter wrench, and let's break this jam nut free. I have a little helper. I'm gonna just break it free, just like that. Once that's just turned a little bit, take this back out. We can turn this tie rod end right out. This will help us, like I said, pull that rack through so this end doesn't get hooked on anything. It's kind of a tight quarters in there. We're gonna dismount our two mounting bolts, 21 millimeter socket below and a 21 millimeter wrench on the top. I'm gonna put, the, put my arm up in here, put the wrench on and get my socket down here. There's one. There's the nut. 
I'm just gonna pry, pry down on this like that. Okay, so I'm gonna use an air chisel on this. This is why it's important to disconnect this from the steering column up there, because you want no damage to that airbag or this clock spring. So these things freeze on there all the time. Just like that. When you disconnect the link, I like to bring it up and lock it on the spring of the strut. So now you can see that sway bar is out of the way and we're clear to grab this outer tie rod end. I'm gonna put my hand underneath here and hopefully guide this rack up. Might have to twist it a little bit, get it to go past certain things. So I want to talk about the rack before you install it. One more quick note is this rack comes already pre-centered and counted. So they painted it and lined it up for you with this, the plastic piece that comes on. That's where the steering shaft's going to go. If you do not have a rack with that, the proper way is to turn this, count it all the way left and then count it all the way right. They call it neutralizing the power steering rack. So you count the turns. If you have one and a half turns completely to the left and one and a half turns completely to the right, you'd cut that in half and that would be the rack being in center. So make sure you do that so when you install it, you can't, because this is, there is no cutoff for the actual steering column to go down on. It's all the same. There's no flat head. There's no big wide tooth. They're all the same. So if you put that steering shaft on here and it's not marked properly, your steering wheel is always going to be off. So before I put the new rack in, I'm also going to take that passenger side tie rod end off. Just loosen that jam nut. That's a 22 millimeter. And I'm going to hold the tie rod end with a pair of adjustables. That's it. It's that easy. I don't want that jam not moving too much because that's going to center this tie rod end for me. We'll put it on once it's in the vehicle. So we're going to position that new rack, slide it right through, and I strongly advise leaving the covers on the pressure line and return line. That way you don't get any dirt or debris. I'm going to follow it to the other side, make sure it's getting clearance. And there it is. Now I'm going to put the passenger side mounting bolt back up and through. Make sure you go through the rack. Put that on. on. Do not tighten everything, just hand tighten. Now I'm going to go over do the driver's side. Put that bolt up through. Make sure it goes through the rack. You got a little love tap. Put the nut on. Again, just hand start it. So now we're going to put this steering column back on the steering shaft. And see that little opening right there? That's where it's going to go on that blue piece. So we're going to slide this thing up into the car body and line that blue piece up. And hopefully, the splines don't give us any trouble. And we can just slide it right down. I did clean the splines out. I just sprayed some parts cleaner in there and then I put some fresh penetrating spray in there so hopefully it will be friendly and work well. So if you can get in there with a little hammer, we're going to just try to tap it down. Then we'll put that pinch bolt in. Make sure it gets all the way down on the shaft of that steering rack. So now I've got it so that the bolt has, it lines up with that cutout. So we're just going to slide the bolt all the way through and you'll know you're there because the bolt will actually want to go in. 
So now I'm going to turn this to the place that it was and get my socket and tighten up that pinch bolt nut on that steering shaft. All right, before I tighten that pinch bolt up, I'm just going to put these locking pliers on it like I did before to hold that in place. Like that. And then tighten it up here. We're just trying to stop it from turning. There we go. Now with that 12 millimeter on an extension, I'm going to tighten that pinch bolt up. Okay, so there is no torque specs. So you, obviously it's a pinch bolt. You want to make sure that's tight, but you don't want to break it. So now we're going to put the return line on. So I'm going to just take a pry bar and pop this rubber boot off. There we go. And take the return line, slide that on. Making sure it goes all the way down. Now I can grab the pliers and put that clamp on. Perfect. So now we're going to remove the cap from the power steering pressure line side. Pair of pliers and just pull that cap right off. So now we're going to take the banjo bolt with the one new copper washer on it, put it through the end of the pressure line, and then put the other end of the new copper washer on the other side of the bolt. Make sure it doesn't fall off. And we're going to have to use the free hand to manipulate this line to line up with the threads. So after a couple little struggling moments, we got it. But you want to be able to turn that like that with your fingers. You don't want to put a socket on it or a wrench because this is aluminum and that'll just eat up the threads and cross thread it and then you'll have a, a huge leaking rack. So I know that's in there. I just turned it several times with the hand. Now I can put my 14 millimeter socket on there. Let's snug it up. All right. Now I'm going to get a 3 8 drive longer ratchet and really snug that up. Bottom it out and turn it a good quarter turn. That's what you want. Crush those little copper washers, make sure they seat. Now we can tighten the rack up back on the body and that would be a 21 millimeter socket on the bottom and 21 millimeter wrench on the top. We're just going to snug it up before we torque them up. Hundred and fifty-five foot-pounds. You're going to torque the two main bolts that hold the rack to the subframe. One uh, 21 millimeter wrench and socket. Now we can plug the electrical connector in on that rack until it clicks. Now with a 14 millimeter socket, we're going to tighten up that pressure line on that banjo bolt. See if we can get in there at any angle. Now I can take those locking pliers off, get them out of the way, and we can start doing the tie rod ends and the sway bar links. So I'm going to slide the new tie rod end in. You have to use the old Mounting hardware, which is a flat washer and a nut. Start it by hand. So I'm just holding down on that tie rod end and I'm going to tighten this nut up as tight as I can. If you don't push down on that, it doesn't go down into the taperedness and the stud will just keep spinning. So a 19 millimeter socket and I'm just using a 3 8 drive to snug it up. And I'm going to pry down on the actual outer tie rod end so that the spindle won't spin. Once it stops, 
I'm going to torque it to the factory spec, which is 34 foot-pounds. Take your new cotter pin and put it right through the tie rod end hole. Make sure it's bottomed out. Now we can take our stabilizer link, put it back in the strut. Put the nut on. That was a 19 millimeter wrench on the back. I'm gonna hold that stabilizer and tighten it up. So 19 millimeter wrench on the back of the sway bar link and 18 millimeter socket on the front. Snug it up. And then we're gonna to torque that to 37 foot pounds. Now don't forget to do the same to the other side. So now we're gonna take that passenger side outer tie rod end and replace it. We took it off so that it would fit through the bracket, could fit in there easier. The GM nut has it moved at all, so it's perfect right where it is. It should be centering that. So now we can take the outer tie rod end, slide it in the knuckle, push it down, take the old flat washer and lock nut Place that on. We're going to snug that down and then torque it to specs. Now we can put this inner fender liner in. It's like a little shield. Take your push pins. So now we're back under the driver's side feet area where, where the pedals are and we're reconnecting that steering shaft. The flat spot goes where the actual bolt is on that side. Let's move that plastic down. We're gonna move this up all the way until it hits this part for the bolt to go through. Take the bolt, slide it through, and then put the nut on. Fourteen millimeter socket, and we're going to snug this bolt right up, and then we're going to torque it to twenty foot pounds. Now that the steering wheel shaft is mounted and everything's secure, we can go ahead and take our seat belt off. We're just going to pull on the actual extractor and disconnect the button. Slide it right through, and let it retract. Now we can fill the power steering fluid back up. So I'm, here is the location of the reservoir. It's on the passenger side in front of the strut tower. I'm gonna remove the cap. I already cleaned it, as you can see. I don't like dirt and debris getting to things. And in this particular case, the service manual says genuine Nissan fluid. So that's what we got here. We're gonna install, hopefully we have enough. I'm going to reinstall the cap and I'm going to go in and turn the wheel now the steering wheel all the way to the right till it bottoms out and all the way to the left. I'm going to do that about let's do it like five to six times without it running and that'll pull all this fluid down and get any air bubbles out. So after about the third time double check your reservoir top it off if needed. So now with the tires not on yet or if they are on make sure the front end is off the ground. I want to just take my steering wheel and turn it 
real steady all the way to the right. Not fast. And of course the vehicle's not on. And then I'm going to retract it and go all the way to the left. That's center. Let's do it again. Center. One more time, I'll to the left, and I'll go check the fluid. This is a good time to check for leaks. There's not much pressure, if any, but if it's really bad leak, it'll be there. Okay, center it. Now let's go check that reservoir. Connect your negative cable. Make sure it goes all the way down on that battery terminal end. And then 10 millimeter wrench and tighten this up. Please feel free to clean your terminal end if it looks like that. I would strongly recommend it. Make sure it's not loose. So now that we know everything's tight, fluid's filled, battery's connected, we're going to start the car up. Put your foot on the brake. It's not hot yet, so it's right here, and that's perfect while it's running. It will expand when it gets warm, and then we'll let it cool down and make sure that it's at the proper level when it's cool. Now we can put the wheel back on. Install the lug nuts. This is a 21 millimeter socket and we're going to tighten it in a crisscross pattern or a star pattern. Wheel torque is 83 foot pounds. Do it in the same star pattern. And don't forget to do the other side and torque it the same, 83 foot-pounds. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.